Last night, I awoke to the incessant barking of our dog, Lucy. Instinctively, my hand fell to my wife's side of the bed, and I swore I could feel the warmth left by her. Lucy rattled another series of barks. They were the playful kind, and I knew my son had sleepwalked again. I strained my eyes and looked out the window, and there he was, crossing the backyard aimlessly. This was the fifth night in a row he had done that, so I knew I only had about a minute before he reached the edge of the forest. I was so tired and I nearly fell back asleep, but my body jerked. I was on my feet and I was out the back door as quickly as my sleepy legs would take me. Thankfully, he didn't wake up when I scooped him up and hurried him back into his bedroom. Dad? The word fell out of his mouth. He was more asleep than awake. Mommy, I'm sorry. He struggled through a deep yawn. Go back to sleep, buddy. I interrupted with a whisper and tucked another blanket around him. He was out before I finished. I sighed when the rays of the morning sun infiltrated the kitchen. The hope to get any more sleep was destroyed, so I decided to put on some coffee and get dressed. I finished just as it was time for a quick breakfast and to put him on the bus. I'm worried about him. Fortunately, his sleepwalking wasn't affecting him as hard as it was me, and that eased my hazy mind. His school bus disappeared down the road, swallowed by a cloud of gravel dust. When it was out of sight, I downed my coffee and steeled my focus to the forest at the far edge of our backyard. I was trying to find any signs of passage through the honeysuckles, but it only took a moment for me to realize how ridiculous that was. I tightened my bootlaces and went to work. Hard labor really makes time pass, and before I knew it, I heard the familiar rumble of the bus bringing my son home. I scrambled out of the forest, wiped off any loose dirt, and stormed through the back door to meet him at the front. Mommy home? He greeted me, running through the door. No, buddy, I said. She isn't. Go shower up. Dinner soon. I did my best to focus on his stories over dinner that night, but when he paused for a bite or to look away, I would steal a glance out the window where the dark depths of the forest beckoned. After I tucked him in that night, I took a seat on the back porch and stared hard into the night. It was more quiet and much darker than it should have been, and as if on cue... The putrid, spectral form of my dead wife emerged from between the trees. Her course would put her at my son's bedroom window if I didn't stop her. I had time, though. She was progressing, sluggishly hovering just a few inches off the ground. She didn't notice me this time, and for a moment, I tried to remember the alluring and elegant woman I had fell in love with. When I stressed hard enough, I could almost see her beauty draped over that rotten thing before me the way she used to look. Pang in my heart professed the love that I still had for her, but that didn't stop the anger from searching. I wish I could kill her again for what she did to me. To us. I was just starting to accept the way things were. Her haunting visitations were my punishment, and I could live with that. However, if I had thought for one second that she would draw our son into it, beckoning him the way she tries to do me, I would have thought twice before ending her. I think it's time to properly and eternally dispose of her body instead of moving it again.